Welcome to August Leco Challenge. Today's problem is design hash set. Design a hash set without using any hash table libraries. We want to be able to add a value, check if the value is contained in this hash set, and also remove it from our hash set. And remember, this is a hash set, not a dictionary or hash table. Now, all values will be in the range of 0 to 1 million, and number of operations will be from 1 to 10,000. So Immediately, this is key here with all the values being in the range of zero to a million. We could do a brute force method and simply create a list um, with the length of a million. And each one of those spots is gonna represent whether the value exists or not. So we can just do that pretty quickly. Uh, we'll say self array equals none for in range of one million. And if we want it first, let's do a contains and we'll say <clears throat> return uh, self array of the key. So if it's contained, it will return a true. Otherwise, it will return none. So I'll return a false. And we can say if self dot contains the key or if if it not contains rather, <clears throat> then we'll take this array and make it equal to true. Uh, we can also do the opposite for remove. If it is contained, then we will reset the array to equal back to none or false for that matter. It doesn't really matter. And this is like the brute force method. Um, it does work, but obviously it's going to take a lot of unnecessary memory. We're going to create this whole list of a million indexes <clears throat> when that might not be necessary. So to reduce that, we could do um, divide this up into buckets and make a thousand buckets of possibly 1000 spots. So to do that, what I would do is create a list of lists um, for the range of 1000. And what we'll do is uh, use a modular function to check um, for each one of these indexes, each one of these buckets is going to represent like from 0 to 1,000. And between those, it's going to have 1 to 1,000 as well to contain, to see if the number is contained. Um, so let's see, to get that right, what we can do is take our key and create like a sub key. And we'll use the modular function to do that. Now we'll say, all right, um, check to see if this list contains anything. So we'll take our sub key. We'll say, all right, return whether this uh, array contains our sub key um, for this list. So it won't will no, no longer be an O of one time complexity, it'll be worst case one of 1000. But um, considering that we're saving a ton of memory, that actually might be better. So it'd still be the same thing here, uh, we'd still have to calculate our sub key. And we'll say, all right, if it contains our uh, key, then append to our list whatever this key is. And the same way, we'll do the same thing here. Uh, we'll get our sub key. And instead of appending, we will remove. Oops. From our list. So this should also work. Uh, that is, if I figure out what I did wrong. X not on list, okay. Um, if self contains key. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I guess this right here is just checking if the list exists, right? So we have to actually check if the key is in there. So if return key in self dot sub key. So make sure that works. Okay, so I think that worked. Let's go ahead and submit that. And that is accepted. And this is actually um, much faster than the other solutions. Now, I don't particularly love this approach because uh, we're not really learning that much about how we could take 
values that are not going to be like 0 to uh, whatever 1 million, what if they're like strings or, or objects. Uh, but for this problem, I think this will suffice. It's just trying to figure out like how these data structures work and how we can implement it to like replicate something like a hash set. All right, so I think I'll stop it here. Thanks for watching my channel. Remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.